Let's consider flexible spring attached on the rigid wall at one end and with the rigid mesh at the other end. The mesh has mass M and the spring has stiffness constant K. Before this mesh is set into motions as we know it, the net force on the system is zero. Now let's pull the mesh by X and let it go. We assume the floor has no friction and the mesh will oscillate back and forth around its resting positions. So the displacement of the mass is a function of time. And now with the system in motion, the resultant force equals to m dx2 over dt square, which is the mass multiplied by the accelerations. And we can denote this as m x double dot. Now we know that there is a reaction force kx by the spring opposite the directions of the motion of the mass and therefore minus kx equals mx double dot. If we arrange the equations, we get mx double dot plus kx equals to zero and these equations we call equations of motions. Now let us look at the case for rotational motions where we have a disc attached on a shaft fixed on a rigid wall where the disc has second mass moment of inertia J and the shaft has torsional stiffness constant KR. Before we twist the disc, no motion on the system and so the resultant moment is zero. Now let's twist the disc by theta and let it go to set it into motions. The resultant moment now is J D2 theta over DT square which is the second mass moment of inertia times the angular accelerations of the disc. And again, this one we can denote as J theta double dot. So the moment acting on the disc is the reaction's moment by the shaft, which is minus Kr theta. So minus Kr theta equals to J theta double dot. Arranging the equations, we get J theta double dot plus Kr theta equals to zero. And this is also the similar equations of motions, but for rotational motion. Okay guys, it's not too difficult to follow, is it? I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.